So, <clears throat> I actually have a bit of a confession to make. Um, I graduated from university uh, with a degree that had absolutely nothing to do with computers. All right, absolutely nothing. No idea for me. Now, I'm, I wasn't afraid of them. I wasn't like didn't not that I didn't like them, but I uh, just didn't really care too much about them in terms of they were nothing more to me than either video game machines. I plug in a cartridge, you play a game, boom, I'm done. Or uh, as I hit university, they were glorified typewriters. And what I thought was really cool about the glorified typewriter was that uh, I didn't have to like put that tape in and hit back and press. The, you guys, there's a couple of nods. The rest of you are probably going, what the heck is that? Um, but for me, that was uh, uh, really about the extent of them. Uh, but then when I graduated, um, so I actually had a degree in English, but I actually wanted to get into writing. Um, and it, I, I tell people, oh, I was, you know, I was trying to write articles and stuff like that. Truth be told, actually, just getting university, I was also writing essays for students. Um, it was good, actually good money in that. Um, it, that's not being recorded, is it? Uh, it was a long time ago. I'm sure they won't lose the degrees now. But uh, through the, so I bought a computer, took it home uh, for nothing more than the purpose of obviously this writing. And then I, I ran into a situation where I had worked on this long essay that was due for this, this poor student and I lost it. I couldn't find it. I didn't, didn't know what happened to it. I don't know if I didn't save it. I, I really don't know. And this really confused and frightened and, and worried me uh, because I didn't really have, you know, what happened to this? Where did it go? And I all of a sudden got wrapped up in this whole, how does this thing work? What am I actually doing when I work on this thing? Um, avid reader, I started reading, uh, started talking to a lot of people, and I started to learn a lot more. And, and now this is going back quite a ways. There was no app store for that. All right, if you couldn't build or, or cobble it together yourself, you didn't get it. Now you just click and you go, oh, it's done. Wow, that was so hard. Um, so I started to learn, and I suddenly realized that the computer was actually all about languages. I'm like, hey, I studied languages. But not only that, it was a very strict form of language that was way easier to deal with than actually the English language or many others for that matter. There was no you know, mismatch, no confusion. And the computer expected a certain language, a certain sequence. And if you gave it to it, you could do amazing things. And I got playing around with different programming languages. Truth be told, my favorite still to this day is Perl. Uh, gives you a whole damn, but it, it was scriptable. It, could, it ran on, you know, compiled at runtime. You get immediate feedback. I could load modules. I, I love this thing. It was amazing. And really, I, I, my writing shifted from writing, well, essays and ultimately what I hope to be articles into writing um, programs, and compiling them and seeing what happens and getting all excited about that. And then I went into what I describe as my poetry phase. Uh, and my poetry phase was really where I started sending the things the computer wasn't supposed to expect, out of order, all that kind of stuff, just to see how it responded. Watching it die in front of me, going, hey, what's all this garbage that's spewed on the screen? And actually taking the time to read it. I mean, that's how weird I am. Uh, I thought it was extremely interesting to me. And that's really what my foray into computers started with. But then something even cooler happened. I started reading about this thing called the internet uh, and internetworking communications in general. I played with a bit of little, you know, contained networks at the time, uh, even done some work for some, but <clears throat> hadn't really done the bigger connections thing. Um, started, did a couple of billboard, uh, um, bulletin boards, things like that. Uh, but then one day I decided uh, I, I'd look into this whole networking thing. And at that point, everything ultimately changed for me. It was a completely uh, a different world, and, and really, my life changed for it. So I, I, a lot of people ask me, oh, how did you get into you know, computers and security? I'm like, I literally just fell into it. Um, so I thought I'd share with you kind of the uh, Hitchhiker's Guide. Uh, isn't we uh, Douglas uh, Adams fans in the, in the audience? Did you all bring your towels? Oh, very good, very good. Everybody brought their towels? You don't travel without your towels, right? If you, if you don't know what it is, uh, you should look it up. I thought it was a fair analogy in terms of uh, things I'm doing there. By the way, how many people came hoping or expecting to see something related to Star Wars? No one? Good, because, you know, uh, uh, I'm done with that. <laughs> don't, don't ask anymore. Um, maybe Spaceballs. That might be interesting. But, <laughs> but uh, the networking piece, you know, really kind of changed everything for me. Um, now, I, I, something I should say up front, too, as well, I'm not going to pretend I actually know everything, you know, even from back then. I, I, I come from a position of, well, you know, back in my day, ha, 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 right? I, I, I got to confess, even back in my day, boy, did I make a lot of mistakes. For example, 
Uh, once I was hired by a company to evaluate this operating system called OS2 Warp versus this new thing called Windows 95, and they really wanted to understand before they made the investment which was the better approach for their business. So I took both those operating systems, well, it was kind of cool, they bought them for me, so I got to play with them. And I did a whole evaluation of the operating system. Of course, I didn't ask what they planned to do with it, what applications are gonna go around. I just looked at the operating system, and guess what won? OS2, clearly, the networking alone on this thing just blew my mind. I'm like, this is an impressive operating system. So I told that company, you need to invest in OS2. Best thing ever. Funny enough, they never hired me again. Uh, that was kind of it uh, at that point. Um, so I'll freely admit that I actually really don't know anything, but I do lots of suppositions and I have lots of experience, but it's experience of trial by fire. So my phone just keeps away on me here. Yeah, that that'll work out well for me. So. I should explain, so to get on the internet, when I first started you know, figuring out about this internet thing, I mean, you could get those AOL disks in your, your McDonald's and stuff, but all that did was I had to call a long distance number because it wasn't really available in Canada. So, however, a local college where I was living at the time actually offered an internet course. I thought, oh, this would be perfect because as part of it, you get internet access. So I showed up that day. Uh, I listened for a bit, but they were really, you know, kind of basic, blah. And so really, I just got my my... Uh, you know, uh, actually they were offering Windsock at the time, although I was playing different OS. I got my disk to connect and I got my username and my password. And then, like I said, I sat down for a little bit, just long enough to realize that the, uh, the school was nice enough to have, uh, essentially they, they had to give you your username and password. And of course, they told you, make sure to change it when you log in. And it was a, a randomly generated series of characters where then they just incremented the last number by one for each student. Yeah, <laughs> and they were also nice enough to give all of us everybody else's email addresses so we could start using this internet thing. So I had a lovely list of email addresses. I knew where I fit in the sequence. They were nice enough to do it alphabetically as well, which was great. I could sequence. So the end result of that was I actually spent maybe 30 minutes in the class. It was supposed to be a three-month course, and then I left, and I never came back. They mailed me my failing grade. Um, but I never uh, was removed from that system because, of course, I had countless accounts that I could get into with, continue to log in. I actually used to taunt the, uh, the uh, administrators, and every time they get rid of me, I'm like, boom. And of course, sure enough, the next, you know, the next uh, class came out after that. Guess what they did? They continued with the same sequence, alphabetized. It took them a while to figure out what the heck I was doing there. Actually, I'm not sure if they ever did. Uh, because I eventually, uh, a local ISP appeared on the market. And uh, they connected, they, they showed up there. So I walked in and right away the, the owner goes, hey, welcome, you know, first ISP for the area. We're happy to, to offer you service. I'm like, great. Um, what's my username and password and what phone number do I call? He goes, oh, well, you bring in your computer. We offer a free setup because you had to really help people get this thing up and working. Does anybody remember Winsock? Right? You actually had to install your IP stack to connect in. It was uh, a whole ordeal. But I just walked in and looked and went, mm, yeah, no, I'm good. My computer's staying at home. Where's my no phone number, username, password? See you later. Uh, and off I went. Um, and I, I, I really, you know, from that point on, it really became... Uh, There we go. It really became a, a kind of a free-for-all. Uh, well, I'm actually way ahead of myself here. My apologies. Um, it actually became a real free-for-all uh, for me on the network. And uh, at one point, I started playing with some websites. And I actually, uh, does anyone remember? OK, this is how, how open we were on the internet. You got to remember, when we first set this up, we got two computers to talk to each other. Uh, we were just amazed that happened. If you'd told me then that we were going to put something in between that might actually stop that, I, I think you were insane. Are you kidding? I just got them talking. Uh, it didn't always, you know, work so well. Sometimes it broke. Um, but experimenting and playing around, I started playing around with this this thing called the web. And uh, I actually created a web page, and I started doing some CGI scripting with Perl. They gave me full access to the CGI bin, and so yeah, that was smart. Uh, <laughs> but again, at the time, it was just hey, they were just impressed anybody used it. I think I was the only person that oh, I get web access. Let's do something with that. So I, I created a web page, which was just one of those classic, you know, you know, 90s style, hey, this is my web page, sign my guest book. And at the end, I put, but you know what? You're not really interested in this. What you're really interested in is dirty pictures. And I had a link there. Now, when you click the link, I didn't actually have any dirty pictures up there. What happened was it triggered the system to do a run a finger command. Does anybody remember finger? 
I can't believe this actually existed, but it was very popular. It would connect to the remote system, pull an email, it would actually respond with your IP. If you hit the finger protocol, it would respond with your name and your email, and most systems would do this. So it would do a finger, it would pull the email, I would parse the email, and it would auto-generate an email that's sent to you, out of my account, of course, it says, ha ha, caught you trying to look at dirty pictures. And then, of course, on the screen, all it would appear was, police have been contacted, you were trying to access pornography, oh, and I thought this was funny, you know, whatever. And I learned a lot about CGI scripting. And then one day, I, I logged in, I go to check my email, and I'm like, wow, well, I got like 10 emails, which back then, there wasn't really a lot of people emailing. I'm like, and it was these people randomly around the internet emailing me back going, I was not looking for dirty pictures. Uh, I remember one guy, he was actually a reverend out of uh, the southern U.S. He was adamant that he was not looking for dirty pictures and something was horribly wrong. And he, I, I didn't reply to them, but this guy had to reply and go, no. It said, click here for dirty pictures. And you did. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't have got this. It's kind of how computers work. They don't magically do stuff for you. And so I thought this was funny. And then the next day, I checked my email. And I think it was up to like 50 messages coming back at me. I thought... Oh, huh, that's kind of weird. And of course, I'm on a dial-up, so it's taking a while to download stuff. Uh, and then the next day, it was somewhere around 100. And then by the end of the week, there was literally 1,000 emails had piled up. I had let my machine trying to download all night to try to clear these out. And, uh, and then I started logging in just via the shell and wiping out my mail file because I'm like, oh, I can't even use that now. And sure enough, within another hour, there'd be a few hundred more pouring in. And then... I couldn't, well, I could connect to my ISP, I couldn't get online anymore. And at this point, the owner started calling me. <laughs> it turns out I was indexed in Yahoo's uh, top 10 funniest websites. <laughs> he was actually uh, on a fractional T1 out of a main office in Ottawa that had the full T1. I not only took out the local office, I took out the main office with just pure traffic coming in. Um, so he calls, he's frantically trying to reach me, and I'm frantically trying to hide from him, thinking, oh my God, he's going to kick me off. This is terrible. What have I done? It was just a joke. Um, he finally locks my account and says, you have to come in and talk about this. And I thought, oh, this is, this is over. Maybe I can get some of my money back. I don't know. So I walk in, I sit down, and he goes, listen, you know that thing you did? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, can you do it again? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. And uh, next thing you know, I actually started working there. Now, again, I was going to show... Before you get too excited about me, you know, uh, getting the top, uh, the top uh, um, spot on Yahoo, this is, this is the oldest image I can get. It was actually older than this. This is what Yahoo actually looked at back then. And quite frankly, previous to that, I've been using something called Alta, Alta Vista, which I thought was kind of cool too. But the Netscape was, uh, was really taking off at the time. Um, so anyway, I, I ended up getting a job uh, at this ISP. Didn't ask for it. He was like, could you just come in and maybe help me with some stuff? I'm like, okay. And that's what he said to me. He goes, you know, you're the only, I was the fifth customer that showed up at the door. And it was the only one that said, yeah, just give me the number and the password. I, I don't want all this crap. He's like handing me disks and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, not interested. Um, so I went in there and I started learning about DNS servers and uh, uh, application web servers. Um, just anything, anything I could play on. It's also when I first got introduced, they used uh, BSDI, uh, uh, Unix, on the back end. And that's actually what started kicking me off to learn all about BSD-based Unix. I became a big free BSD guy and then open BSD. Uh, loved playing with the Unixes and started taking over more and more of really the, the functions within the internet. He used to buy his service through a, a main company. Eventually, I just, I'm like, I could do that. It's DNS entry, no big deal. And so eventually, I was really running most of, he, most of these ISPs. He was spread out across uh, uh, southern Ontario. And then <clears throat> I remember sitting at home one day, and I get a phone call, and he goes, that's eh, the boss. He's like, hey, the mail's down in Peterborough. I'm like, oh, the mail's down. Now, this is back in the days where, you know, like right now, if the mail's down, it's like, oh, my God, the mail's down. Run for your life. Pagers go off. We all go crazy. Um, back then, it was like, eh, the mail's down, whatever. Um, I'll just check it later, you know, go do something else. Um, so I go into look, and I actually telnet it into my server, if that's any indication of how long ago this was, and I can't even get into it. I can't even log into the thing. It's not accepting my password. I'm like, what the heck? So I was really pissed, because I actually had to get in a car and drive somewhere. I was already starting the work from home thing. Um, I get to Peterborough, I get there, and I realize this machine is not mine anymore. Somebody had completely taken it over, filled it full of software and all kinds of stuff. It was being distributed around the internet. And this stunned me because I had a password on it. How on earth did somebody get into my system? 
So I fixed it up, I cleaned it, I put it back online and restored the backups. I mean, I did my due diligence. I was a good server admin, got it back up and running, kind of scratching my head going, wow, how did that happen? A couple days later, same thing again, another server, another location. I'm like, oh my God, what is going on here? So I eventually, I didn't know what it was at the time, but I actually eventually set up a honeypot. Uh, well, not even a honeypot. My machines were the honeypot, but I set up a, a sniffer system. <laughs> they were basically wide open. And I would watch, and I'd see the traffic, and I'd started correlating. It was a lot of work, but I correlated. I learned a lot about reading raw packet data. Um, correlated what they did. And I started to realize, oh my God, there's so much more you can do. I thought about all the programming and stuff, and I'm like, now I have access to do programmable things to other people's machines, whether they like it or not. This is amazing to me. Um, and really, at, at that point, it turned into kind of a, a free-for-all on the internet, but it was a game. It was really a game, uh, because there wasn't much stuff online. Um, I, as part of this, learning how to do these things and started finding tools, I actually got most of my information from uh, IRC, Internet Relay Chat. Does anybody remember IRC? So that was like, for the rest of you, that's what we used to call Facebook. <laughs> you could share images, movies, just probably not as pretty as what you're used to, but uh, it certainly worked. Um, became chat. I used to desync entire IRC servers so I could take over a channel, just to be a jerk, because uh, I could. And uh, my wife can actually attest to, uh, to much of this uh, mayhem because I thought it was funny. Now, I didn't quite understand what I was doing at the time. I do now in Prefest. So I look back at it. When I said I desynced IRC servers, I would take Leaf or Hub servers offline for minutes at a time. These Leaf and Hub servers were sitting in major universities across the US and Canada. Uh -huh. I would take them offline for a few minutes so I could take over a channel like some kind of jackass. Now, I had a lot of power because not only did I have all these ISPs, all this bandwidth availability, these programming skills, I also had reverse DNS lookup control for entire blocks of C addresses. Does anybody have any idea what that means? Did anyone have any idea how dangerous you could be, especially in a day when our login based on what your ID was was a, a perfectly fine thing? Um, I got a little you know, out of hand. I went all over the place, uh, I hacked everything I could in sight. Um, I thought you know, I, I was having the best time ever. Um, occasionally, people come back at me, but the worst I'd ever get was you know, maybe an angry email and, and a, or a job offer. Um, and sometimes they were both. I mean, I get the angry email and I finish up with, by the way, are you looking to work? Uh, um, by the way, I, I actually hacked my own first domain. Um, and by that, I found a, a, it was a top level domain. Oh, heck, I'll say their name now. It's Christmas Tree Island. When they first came online, they offered top level domains, .cx's. Um, the way they set it up, it was one single server. It ran the DNS resolver right there on it. And they used a web interface for you to put and put your information. And they were nice enough to run the DNS server and the web server as root so that it could alter the records and you know, restart it. It was also subjected to a directory traversal. Does anybody remember that? It's simple directory traversal. So using just directory traversal commands, I wrote my own DNS records into their system. And I named my domain killhub because the last command I had to send was a killhub to the DNS process so it would reread the records. And lo and behold, four hours later, I started resolving on the internet. I thought, hey, this is great. And if I needed to change my IP, I would just hack back in, do, 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 do. Uh, you know, uh, change the records, kill hop it, off I go. And this worked great for literally years. Now, over the course of those years, I eventually became, you know, security professional, I was working. And then one day they moved to a real register. Now, the cool thing was when they moved, they took all the records with it. So even though it was now moved in official register, my, I was still resolving. But then that day came where I'm like, I have to resolve, I have to change my IP. So I sent a quick message to the register owner just saying, hey, I just, I just need to change this record here. If you could just make that change for me, that'd be cool. Um, they emailed me back and they were like, um, yeah, this is interesting. I could tell from the tone of the letter that they were a little confused about me, probably had an idea what was going on, but they're like, interesting, we have all your DNS records, your domain, everything. We just don't have any records about you, <laughs> who owns it, the company, literally nothing. So at that point I thought, you know what, I've been using this thing for I think at that point five years, I should probably just pay them and you know. So I'm like, oh, I don't know what happened. So they apologized because there must've been some kind of screw up in their part. <laughs> Um, but it's just great though, I, I, I'm now, you know, actually pay for it and own it and, and don't do uh, uh, bad things with it anymore. Uh, but that was really how I looked at the internet, it was just this thing I could do and play with.
But then something happened. Uh, we, at the ISP I worked for, actually offered upstream service, downstream services to other smaller ISPs, regional ISPs. And I actually got uh, uh, contacted by them once. Well, actually, they contacted my boss and said, hey, your guy there, hacker. And of course, people knew me at that point. I'd go around ravaging stuff. But I'd contact them afterwards and go, ah, this screwed up. You need to fix this. Ha, ha, ha. I thought that was funny. And uh, he said, hey, he's hacked us. He stole their password file, and we're really worried about what he's going to do to all our users. Now, I knew I did, had not done this. I did, didn't actually go after their password file. Um, I, so I, I immediately fire back, whoa, now you guys are just making stuff up. And they're like, look, we can show you the records. I'm like, yeah, I can write up records too. It was just syslog, right? I mean, how hard was that? Um, so we fought back and forth. And I always thought, why would they always do this to me? And I'm sure, pretty sure they're angry at me. Well, they, they seemed absolutely convinced it was me. It was actually many months later. We didn't speak for a while. My, I thought I was going to get fired. My boss is like, look, just don't talk to them anymore. Keep doing your thing. But don't hack them anymore. And I'm like, no, I really didn't do it. And I talked to them uh, uh, years later because they knew my IP. They knew my locations and the servers I managed. And they said, it was you who came in. And I'm like, it really wasn't. And the one guy says, you know, I actually believe you. You were so adamant about because I was always fairly open when I hacked you. I was like, ah, I got gotcha. you. Uh, and I actually thought it was kind of cool when people got me too. I was like, hey, how'd you do that? But this was not one of those scenarios. And so I, uh, I talked to them and they said to me, they said something that really hit me. And that's when the, the whole you know, weight of security came down upon me. And I started to realize that, that the impact of all this. And they said, but your system that you're saying you didn't hack us from, they go, it's a multi-user system, is it not? Of course, it was a, a, Unix, a Unix box. And I went, oh yeah, maybe I did. Well, more importantly, my machine did, but it wasn't necessarily me. And it hit me. All these fun, funky things I'm doing were actually impacting me as well. And not only that, through this process, it went from you know, being a fun joke to starting to get to be annoying. People's businesses were on there, they're getting angry. And literally the internet changed around me. It went from, ah, we hack stuff, we have fun, to people actually connecting their businesses to it. Um, I remember I worked for an organization that put some of the Canada's first banks online. A year before that, I was hacking away at machines. A friend came over to the house, he goes, wow. He was looking out, just he didn't understand computers. He just saw the screens going off and all this stuff. He's like, wow, you could hack into my bank. And I remember saying to him, banks aren't going to plug into the internet. That would be crazy. And almost a year later, I'm working on one of Canada's first banks online, whole brokerage, everything, going, oh my God, this is crazy. Um, but we did it anyway. <laughs> they were terrified when they first went online, but then they figured out how much money they were going to make on it. But this is when I started to learn, um, you know, the, the, the excitement for me in terms of what we do is, is every day was different. Uh, every day was exciting. Applications were changing, things were changing. Um, but I had an in-depth understanding from, from how they were working. I'm just going to hold this so it doesn't fall. It's making me nervous. Um, the, the, uh, the, the technology it just felt like it was constantly changing. Um, and it was exciting. However, it was five minutes. All right, I'll go quick. Um, you know, as I went, went through it, I, 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 started, I actually left uh, security for a little while. Around 2000, I thought, you know, I've done everything there is to do. I hear this voice over IP thing is kind of cool. This thing could really take off. So I actually left security. I went to voice over IP. It turns out trying to sell voice over IP before Nortel had introduced it to the market was crazy because I lived in Canada. And if Nortel wasn't doing it, clearly there was something wrong. Um, although we know in hindsight now that that wasn't true. Um, but uh, it was a great experience for a while. But then I figured out once you compress voice a couple different ways, that's about as exciting as it gets. So I then started to fall back. I remember sitting in a class for our phone switch, and I looked, and I'm like, oh my god, I know this. This is Sun OS. And so immediately I said to put my hand up, and I said to the instructor, I go, what's the root password? He goes, there's no root password. I'm like, well, I don't know. This is thing. So I'm plunking away. He's literally five minutes into the introduction. I put up my hand, I go, I got root. He was not amused. Uh, matter of fact, they pulled me out of the class. But then I found myself uh, working with our uh, team to build security solutions to link into to voice over IP. Interestingly enough, at the time, I was actually working on an OEM relationship with this company called Checkpoint, uh, realizing that the VoIP thing was probably not going to go much further. And I liked the security. I ended up jumping right back into security for, uh, for all it's worth. But I wouldn't turn away that experience for anything. Uh, because really the things I learned on the voice of IP side were completely applicable to security, especially as these things came on, um, understanding the, the gateways and things like that. So I'm here to tell you that if you want to get into IT security for the money, um, you might want to look elsewhere. <laughs> the money is actually being made by the business, not by the security. You're really part of the infrastructure. 
Um, and, and quite frankly, if, if how many people here do a lot of pen testing? Hacking stuff, right? It's truthfully the safer version of what I used to do. By the way, the stuff I used to do, please don't do that online anymore. I mean, you actually go to jail for it now. People know what it is, they'll come get you. But we have these cool things like red team, blue team, capture the flag. We can still practice and test, yeah, somewhat, a little less than the real world systems. But the, the aspect is of people coming in and, and hacking stuff and, you know, I have to tell you, you're not a rock star. You're not all that exciting to the business. Um, because the reality is, is uh, they barely notice if you uh, protect the system. They certainly don't care if you break it because really you're just getting in the way of their business. You're getting in the way of what they're trying to accomplish. So what you have to remember when you're talking about the business and you're talking about the things you do is that it is really all about building something. Um, just going in and breaking something uh, doesn't really help you, doesn't really actually uh, uh, move them forward. You need to learn what the other groups do, what the other applications are running. Um, there's, uh, there's more than just security to the business. I apologize, I'm jumping a little bit quicker. But it, I'll put it in perspective, I was uh, in a business, right? If, if you want to excel in security, you know, you have to know, you know, the, the, you have to have all the answers. And I mean that across all the applications. Uh, one of the first calls I took in, in a big organization they, with a developer, he's like, oh, I need developer access for this application. I'm like, great. What service ports will you require? And he kind of paused for a second and goes, um, all of them? I said, well, sir, there's 65,535 uh, 65, of them. Uh, I'm going to need to know which one. He goes, wow, there's that many? I can have all those? I'm like, no, no, no. Actually, 1,024 of them reserved. But oh, oh, he goes, then I need to reserve my port. I'm like, no, no, that's, that's not the way it works. Today, we have things called application control. And what we do is we stand back, and if our firewall doesn't recognize it, we go, oh, man, what's wrong with this firewall? Instead of taking the time to go down and talk to somebody who runs the application and saying, what the heck are you doing? We're trying to answer the question, uh, we're trying to find the answer before we actually know what the question is. And so if there's anything I could say is, is if you're really interested in getting into security, the, the big message I can say is the pen testing is great. That's your tool, that's your towel that gets you in and gets you going. Uh, but the thing that really takes you forward is how well you understand the applications. How will you understand these things work? And there's really only one way to do it, uh, and that's ultimately to, to get involved, uh, to get out there and uh, uh, try it. Install an operating system, a different one. Stop using this app for that store. Um, when I was around, we're not an RTFM uh, generation. We should be an RTFS generation. Does everybody know what that is? If you don't, go look it up. You all need to RTFS. We need to get back to what we used to do. And if you're in security, that's ultimately where uh, you can be your strongest. It's the things you learn outside of security that you bring into it that make you strong. Anyway, I'm getting the hook here, so I gotta go. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody very much. I thank everybody for bringing me here, and a special thank you to my wife, who on her day off decided she'd come down and hang out with me at uh, my nerd conference, as she calls us. Uh, so please be nice to her, <laughs> and thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.